So we're going to be talking about hypertension. Uh, but before we kind of get into that, I want to talk a little bit about just a, a brief review of how blood is coming to the heart and where it's going from there. So we have blood that's coming back to the heart. That's going to be deoxygenated blood. I'm not going to do a full uh, pathway because that's covered in other videos. Um, but then it goes to the lungs. And in the, when it goes to the lungs, it's going to pick up oxygen. And then it's going to come back to the heart. And then the ventricle are going to contract and this left ventricle here is going to send blood out to the body via these major vessels that are coming off of the aorta. Now that blood is going to be oxygenated so it can go to the organs and to the places that needs it in the body and it can deliver that so that it can do those organs can do what they need to do. I want you to picture one of the arterioles. Actually I'm going to draw an artery Let's go ahead and draw an artery here. And then I am going to show blood coming through it. So I'm going to show that we have uh, red blood cells. And with that, of course, we're going to have plasma and a number of different things that are traveling through uh, these blood vessels. And this is one of the major blood vessels. And what I want you to understand is when the heart is beating, it is allowing that blood to move with a certain amount of force. And that is exerting pressure on the walls of the blood vessels. So it's pushing in, in these directions, but as a result of the contraction of the ventricle, it's applying force and applying pressure to the walls of those arteries. Now, if I were to look at a graph that's showing the pressure uh, on the y-axis in, in millimeters of mercury and then time on the x-axis, what I would see, and let's stick with red since we're dealing with blood, what I would see is that there's going to be a fluctuation in the amount of pressure. So it's going to look something like this. All right. And let's say this is in a major artery in an average individual and it's going to have these high points which are going to be up here and we have these low points and I'm going to say that's around 120 millimeters of mercury and 80. So this is 120 over 80. That's the average that we always hear about. This high point is during that ventricular contraction and this low point is during ventricular relaxation. Now, in a situation of hypertension, you got to think, think about what this means. Hyper, that's a prefix that means over or above. And this tension has to do with the, um, the force that, uh, that is applying tension. It's causing it to stretch or elongate or something of that sort. And in this case, we're dealing with the pressure that is being exerted on the walls of the arteries. So, in an individual that has hypertension, which means high blood pressure, we would expect to see something that looks like this. Let's do it in a cyan color. Um, so, it's going to be significantly higher than that average 120 over 80. And let's say this individual is maybe around 145 over 100 or something of that sort. I drew that a little higher here, but you get the point. Significantly higher than normal. This is high blood pressure. This is hypertension. Now, why is this such a big deal? I'm glad you asked. It's a big deal because we mentioned here that you're applying pressure on the walls of the vessels. And if that pressure is very high for a, a long period of time, a sustained period of time, that can actually cause damage to the blood vessels. And if you damage those blood vessels, that's going to affect the ability of the blood to go to the target location. And that is not a good thing. So, I want you to imagine, uh, let me stop saying imagine, I'm just going to draw it for you. This is a larger artery, but then we have some little arterioles or even the capillaries that are significantly smaller. The, the lumen, the space in between, it can be as narrow as uh, one blood cell. So... If in some locations where we have these capillaries, uh, in many locations where we have these capillaries, they're actually kind of moving through almost in a single file because of how small those capillaries are. And those are going to be even more susceptible to damage if you have 
high pressure for a sustained period of time. So, of course, this is not a situation that you want to have. Now, there are going to be two main categories that I want to talk about. There, there are other ways of classifying it, but I'm going to say that there are two kinds of hypertension. And those two kinds are going to be primary, or you can also call that essential hypertension. And then there's going to be, you guessed it, it's going to be secondary hypertension. And I'll define this one first. Secondary hypertension has to do with high blood pressure, of course, but that's when there's some identifiable cause. So you might see that an individual has hypertension, uh, but when you do a number of other tests, you might see that um, there's kidney dysfunction. So if there's damage to the kidneys, that can actually lead to high blood pressure, and that would be secondary hypertension. Um, so that's one example. With primary hypertension, there's no specific medical cause that you can identify. Um, the blood pressure is consistently over 140 over 90, so 140 over 90 or above, and that is considered primary or essential hypertension um, if it's sustained. So what are going to be the signs of hypertension? And this is where things can get a bit complicated. The reason it can get complicated is because it's usually asymptomatic until it gets to the advanced stages, which is not a good thing because if that individual isn't going in for regular checkups, they don't know they have hypertension, they might feel some um, vague and nonspecific symptoms, and some of those symptoms, let's draw it in red because it's bad, some of those symptoms might be things like fatigue, uh, malaise, so that just feeling of, I, I just don't feel good, um, lightheadedness, uh, headache, headaches, I almost said headacheness, <laughs> um, headaches, these are some of the symptoms. Now, do you notice that these are quite regular symptoms? I mean, how, how often do you feel fatigued or you're just not feeling that well or maybe you're lightheaded? Do you think high blood pressure? Not necessarily. So it can often go undiagnosed until it's very advanced. Now, how, how do people notice that they do have high blood pressure? They might go for a regular checkup, for example, and when you take your blood pressure, you notice that it's a little higher than normal, and you take it at a later occasion, and you notice it's still higher than normal, and maybe you do three readings in one month where you go to a doctor and they check to see what your blood pressure is, and it's consistently high. That is an indication that something can be um, wrong with that individual in terms of hypertension. Hypertension. Now, how do you prevent this? How do you prevent hypertension? You don't want this to be the case. You want to be in good health. Well, a key to that, let's get rid of some of this here. A key to that is being in good health. <laughs> um, so for in terms of prevention, there are a number of strategies for preventing hypertension. Of course, anything that has to do with general cardiovascular health, uh, I'm just going to put general CV health. So I'm dealing with things like regular exercise, um, aerobic exercise. That's going to, of course, help with a general cardiovascular health. Um, maintaining your body weight. Watching sodium intake. So salt. That plays a role, and in a later video, we'll talk a little bit about sodium and how that affects um, hypertension. Um, eating well, just generally eating well. Fruits and veggies, getting the, the right amounts of fruits and veggies, and also regulating, and this is a big one, regulating stress. That is also going to play a significant role because um, there can be some neurogenic um, effects of stress on the cardiovascular system that can cause hypertension. So these are some of the uh, preventative measures that can be taken so that you minimize the risk of hypertension. That's it for this video. In another video, we're going to talk more specifically about the mechanisms.